Nice question. Jesse Camacho, Doug Brazil, oh. Savini squad member. Yes, he's one of my best friends and he's just such a hoot to be on set with. He's a, just a bundle of joy and so good. We had our little moment in first season of the like, bye, I love you. Um, and yeah, I love Jesse Camacho. So. Oh man, that's a really tough question. Um, Cause I really enjoyed everyone I did scenes with. Um, and now I have such a broad list. I feel like if I leave someone out, it's going to be really mean. Um, but <laughs> let's see, Jesse is a yes. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely loved working with Connor and we honestly did not get enough scenes this season. Um, I have a bunch of scenes with Amelia and Patrice, uh, but that love triangle dynamic is a lot of fun to play with. And uh, I wish I had more scenes with the two of them together. I had scenes, you know, with separately, but all together would have been a lot of fun. And Aaron Ashmore, Uncle Dunk. Just love that guy's Hunk energy. Hunky Dunky. I want to know, you're both essentially playing uh, demons this season. Um, how hard is it to play a demon, but also to like keep the humanity alive in there? I would say it's not hard. Um, it is a challenge, but I think it's every actor's kind of goal to take on challenges. And this is a, a really exciting one. It's a fun one. You know, you get to dive into something that's not normal. It's out of the ordinary. And, um, you know, that's what excites me personally as an actor is getting to try new things and learning something. And I definitely learned a lot from, from this one. Um, so mm -hmm. even if it was hard, uh, I would more call it just a really fun challenge. Yeah, the writing kind of gave us the playground and then running through it and just kind of jumping to wherever we landed was um, a lot of fun and, and a big challenge, as Griffin said, but it was nice to work on something that was more than just like, just the popular girl at school, especially for me, just playing something that's a little bit, uh, or not a little bit, a lot more extreme in so many different ways was a lot of fun. As weird as this might sound, it's not something that I, that I thought about um, quite all, all too often while shooting was getting in the right headspace. Um, Gabe is such like a you know, multi-dimensional character that he's never just one thing at any given time. You know, he is um, a demon, but he's been in this world for so long. He's taken this, this shape, this form, and he's, you know, starting to live in the human world. And I think you'll notice during, during this season, this isn't necessarily a spoiler, but, you know, he sort of struggles internally, or at least this is how I saw it, with the issue of being human at the same time. You know, it's not a major plot point or anything, but in the back of my mind, that's sort of how I always saw it was this guy is evil personified, um, but he's more than, than, than that, you know? So a lot of it was just being as menacing and scary as possible. Cause I think that's what the exciting thing is in a lot of these scenes is, is the sort of the fear um, and the anxiety that you get from having a literal demon around. Um, mm -hmm. so that was mostly where my, where my brain was at was, you know, be as scary as possible, uh, be menacing, be strong and powerful, but getting into that headset, um, I think happens kind of naturally because, you know, we are human. We're not demons. We're just actors. And, um, you know, you get to add a little bit of that into, into the character if you want to, you know, mm -hmm. just, um, some sense or spark of humanity just comes out naturally. What are the chances of a um, Gabe and Eden ship happening? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> Look, I'm a shipper and, and I, I ship it. Oh, that's very kind of you. Would our ship um, name be Gideon? Gideon or Abe? Abe? I don't, there's no good ship name. And when there's no good ship name, you know that it's not. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, I. Eden cannot I, stand Gabe. Yeah, I don't think Gabe can stand Eden either, which, you know, sometimes that leads to more chemistry. In this case, um, it's more like um, just like pain. <laughs> yeah, Violence. it's very toxic. It's it, would be a, toxic it would be a poor relationship. It really would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Nah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so we get introduced to a, a few new keys uh, in season two. Do you have a favorite key from the second season? The wings key is like really, really cool. Yeah. Power of flight. I mean, how many times have you looked at a bird flying through the sky and just been like, man, I wish I could fly. This key lets yeah. you do that. That's really fun. I think that's almost more fun than the anywhere key. 
that's always been my favorite key since um, I read the comic books because I just find it so beautiful. And also, yeah, like how often have I looked at birds? I have like a little bird tattoo. Like I wish I could fly. Um, but it's actually an interesting little point is that in season one, Kinsey goes down into the caves with the Savini squad. And if anyone with a sharp eye noticed, she had two wings on her jacket. That was a foreshadowing for second season. So it's really cool to see Kinsey um, play with that in the second season. Um, but yeah, that is... That is a spoiler. Honestly, a small world key does not seem that interesting to me. I mean, like to have in real life. Yeah. I mean, can you take things? What I always wondered, I mean, to, yeah. Uh, I always wondered was, could you take something like out? Could you take like a person out of the small world house? No, and then would they be like little ant people? You know what? Tune in to Lock and Key seasons two and three to maybe have your question answered. <laughs>